California politicians want to make it illegal for you to confront a shoplifter who's committing a crime in your store. You get to be the criminal, not them. Coming up, I'll tell you about this crazy law and how we're fighting to stop it. I'm Carl DeMaio, Chairman of Reform California, and this law that I'm going to talk about is perhaps one of the craziest laws I've seen California liberal politicians propose, and let me tell you, they've got a lot of crazy ideas. Um, but let me start out by saying that there is a pattern of behavior in California. Our politicians are doing their, their best, everything they possibly can, to coddle criminals, to protect criminals, to enable and encourage criminals. And they're doing almost nothing to defend crime victims. And in fact, the law that we're going to talk about right now will basically take a crime victim and convert them into a criminal. This is just insanity. I'm talking about Senate Bill 553, introduced by State Senator Dave Cortese, again, a liberal Democrat. Uh, and it would prohibit people from confronting shoplifters in their store. Uh, it specifically says that if you're an employee of a store, that you're not allowed to confront a shoplifter and that the employer also is banned from uh, requiring you to do anything about shoplifting in the store. Now, what this means is if someone does confront a shoplifter, they can be charged with a crime. Now, mind you, these liberal politicians have done nothing to address the spike in retail crime, shoplifting, and violent crime in the state of California. We've covered in other videos the crime wave and what's causing it. California politicians are, number one, not prosecuting crimes because of Prop 47 that they pushed through. Uh, it downgraded uh, felonies to misdemeanors, misdemeanors to parking tickets. Someone actually has to steal more than $950 per day per store, uh, if they keep it under that, uh, there's no prosecution. And even if you do break the law, if you live in, say, Los Angeles, where George Soros-backed District Attorney George Gascon is the district attorney, uh, those DAs are not actually taking cases up. So the first part of the crime wave is because we've downgraded uh, the uh, uh, punishment uh, and the prosecution threshold on a variety of crimes in the state, and prosecutors are not even willing to take the cases up. The second reason why we have a crime wave is we are letting people out of jail. We're letting people out with no bond and no bail. We are uh, releasing uh, prisoners early from prison and flooding our streets with hardened criminals. That's only increasing the crime wave. And third, we've reduced our police presence. We are undermining police officers so that they can't really go out and catch the bad guys and actually do the arrests that are necessary. Now, because of those three reasons, additional criminals are being recruited because when people see every day on TV, shoplifters literally walking into a store with no concern, no even embarrassment, and just taking things off shelves, when people see that, obviously law-abiding citizens are angry and upset about it, but would-be criminals say, hey, if they can do it, so can I. So all these policies that the Democrats and the liberal politicians in Sacramento have implemented, they have led to the crime spree that we're seeing. And you see the stories every day, businesses fleeing California, closing retail stores in San Francisco, where there's a real problem of homelessness and uh, property crime. You see Whole Foods shutting, Walgreens are shutting, uh, Target's shutting, uh, all these retail stores shutting down, the mall is shutting because people cannot, the businesses cannot afford all the shoplifting and the losses that go along with it. On top of that, you do know that the um, products are now all behind lock and, lock and key. Um, and it, it d diminishes any sort of efficient or uh, comfortable uh, shopping experience for patrons. This bill, though, goes to a whole new level. It tries to make criminals out of the victims of crime. A small business owner, 
the store clerk. They're traumatized by all this property cr crime. Uh, and if people say, well, it's nonviolent. When someone takes your property and you know there's nothing you can do, it absolutely is demoralizing. It destroys the whole psyche of these small business owners when they see their hard work being completely diminished and destroyed by these criminals. And that is exactly what's happening. We're allowing this to happen. We're encouraging it to happen. And now we're telling them, if you do stand up for yourself, we're going to make a criminal out of you. And that's Senate Bill 553. Now, it's not just Senate Bill 553 that's doing this. Uh, whenever there is a confrontation with a shoplifter, if you assault them, you might actually be charged with assault, not the shoplifter. The shoplifter is a, a victim of the assault. The shoplifter can spit on you. They can attack you. They can, they can uh, punch you. You punch back. You might actually be the one charged. Uh, every time a small business owner or a store clerk um, fires a gun at someone who's trying to rob or um, you know, holding up with, with a weapon a store, the district attorneys in California and all the activists are egging them on are saying, well, I have to see whether what you did as the crime victim, whether what you did was appropriate or you might have broken the law and maybe we can charge you. Uh, nationally, we see this in New York City with a uh, good Samaritan who put a chokehold around a guy who went onto a subway uh, and said he was going to kill people on that subway. Now he's being charged with murder, even though many would say that he was a good Samaritan who was simply trying to subdue that attacker. In May of 2023, a similar controversy happened. Uh, Walgreens security guard, guard Michael Earl, Earl Wayne Anthony um, shot and killed Banco Brown, who not only was shoplifting, but had been making violent and threatening remarks to the security guard and actually got into a physical fight that was caught on video. Uh, Banco Brown then lunged back into the store and Mr. Anthony discharged his weapon, killing him. Now, the district attorney reviewed the case and decided Charges were not warranted, but the community protested, demanding blood, demanding that the victim of the crime, and the security guard here is a victim of the crime. He was assaulted. His store was, was uh, stolen from, that the victim of the crime should actually be the one to be punished. Listen to this um, um, uh, media uh, package from the Bay Area during this controversy. <laughs> Demonstrators took to Market Street in San Francisco Monday evening, demanding District Attorney Brooke Jenkins change her decision to not file charges. They believe Banco Brown's death should never have happened. It is time to press charges. Uh, the video was horrific. Demonstrator Nancy Robles saw the video, and she's upset at the DA and the security guard who fired the shot that killed Brown. She's claiming that it was self-defense. We saw the video. We know it's not self-defense. Brown's family believes the security guard should be prosecuted. San Francisco Supervisor Aaron Peskin says he was troubled by the video, and he'll ask the Board of Supervisors to join him in calling for further review. I am personally asking both California's Attorney General as well as the United States Department of Justice to review the evidence in this case. This is not who we are. Uh, stealing a bag of candy does not warrant death. Attorney Burris supports that idea. I think another set of eyes on this is a good thing because there's been so much public scrutiny. So they're actually demanding that the DOJ come in and uh, investigate and perhaps file charges, even though the district attorney has decided not to pursue charges. And you do know that the uh, family of Banco Brown, the criminal in this case, they're now suing the security guard for millions and millions of dollars in civil damages. Um, back to this Senate Bill 553. I want to um, uh, share with you the comments from a representative of the small business owners who Again, they feel traumatized. They feel victimized by the, the, the spree of shoplifting. Here's a clip from a uh, California Retail Federation spokesperson. This is their livelihood. This is their blood, sweat, and tears going into these stores. And now you're telling them, 
I'm sorry, you just have to open up your doors and let people come in and take whatever they want out of your store. You cannot engage with them. Look, no business is going to remain in California. No small business owner can survive if they're having their 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 goods, their livelihoods um, uh, destroyed through all this theft. And if Senate Bill 553 passes, nobody's going to want to put themselves in a situation where they could actually be charged with a crime just for standing up and defending their property, which is their Second Amendment right. Second Amendment right is not just about the right to bear arms. Second Amendment is a fundamental human right of self-defense. Every human has the human right of self-defense. It's basic. It's timeless. And yet in California, liberals don't think that you have the right of self-defense. Oh, if you play by the rules and if you are trying to do what's right and you then defend yourself, you will become the criminal. Meanwhile, the criminals, the thieves, the gangbangers, these crime spree artists, they are protected, enabled, and encouraged by our politicians. And SP 553 will only pour fuel on the fire. It is so offensive and it is dangerous. At Reform California, we're fighting to not only combat the crime spree, but we're fighting to defeat Senate Bill 553. We do this in a number of ways. Number one, obviously, we're spreading the word through videos like this and other media platforms to get the word out so that people know how dangerous legislation like SB 553 is. We also want to clean house when it comes to the politicians. We're working to elect uh, tough on crime district attorneys, sheriffs, uh, city council members, mayors, state assembly members, state senators, you name it, any office that could have an impact on our public safety, we're supporting the pro-police, pro-public safety candidates. Uh, and we also are working to repeal Proposition 47 and Prop 57, which uh, allow for early release of prisoners and uh, limit the prosecution of criminals. If you want to join the fight, please go online to restorepublicsafety.org. Restorepublicsafety.org has all sorts of news and information that you can share with your friends and family and neighbors. Uh, you also can contribute. We are completely grassroots driven with our contrib contrib contributions. Uh, the average contributor over a year gives only $67, usually about five or six bucks a month. So please contribute what you can at restorepublicsafety.org. Uh, until next time, this is Reform California with Carl DeMaio. Thanks for watching. Help us break through the censorship of the liberal media by liking this video, sharing it with your friends, and subscribe to my YouTube channel.